Hey guys, Chaps here, and welcome to the second episode of Chaps Math. With the recent outcry over the Gearsmiths and UIR packs, I figured I could lay down some math about how long it's going to take you to get every item. With these two packs, as well as the 10 years of Gears packs, I ran some simple calculations, as well as some more complex simulations, to come up with these values. Today, I wanted to show you the basics of the simulation, and show you how you personally can calculate reasonable estimates. Due to the recent uproar over the UIR packs, I'm going to use those as the example for this video. Let's start with the more complex simulation I ran. I'm not going to get into the details of programming it, it's quite simple if you know how to program. What I am going to show you though is what it does. The simulation draws three random cards, with each being different, to represent that the pack has uh, no duplicate items within the pack. It's then going to check these three cards off the list of objects obtained. It's then going to draw three more random cards, and the process is going to repeat. It's going to go on and on doing this over and over again, until each card has been drawn at least one time. This is essentially what you're doing in-game. You're just buying packs over and over again, getting three random non-duplicate cards, until you've gotten each card at least one time. Each time my script runs, it does this process 10,000 times, representing 10,000 players all trying to get every card. Here's some of the results. In an ideal world, you could open as low as 11 packs and still get all 33 items, assuming you get no duplicates though. According to the simulation though, out of the 50,000 people I sampled, I essentially ran my script 5 times, 10,000 people per script, it showed that your results are going to look more similar to this. On average, it took 44 packs for people to get all 33 items, and as you can see, someone was lucky enough to get them all after 16 packs. That's pretty good. Now you can see this other end of the plot, it took others well over 80 packs, with a max of taking 153 packs to unlock every item. For you stat-savvy people out there, um, this is by no means a normal curve. The distribution is not normal at all but the standard deviation is approximately 13 packs. Alright, so that's a fairly accurate way of predicting it, and it's pretty easy for me to code that up. But most people don't code, so how can you get an estimate yourself? Well, let's take a look at this other method that I've been using a lot. In Excel, let's start by typing in the total number of items that are available. Now create a countdown from this number, 33 in our case, down to 1. This sort of represents the items that you still have left to obtain after each, what I'm going to call a trial. Now what we're going to do is divide each of these values by 33, or our total number of cards possible. This tells us the probability of getting one of the cards we don't already have during this trial. By taking the inverse of this column, we now know, on average, how many cards you're going to need to draw in order to get one that you don't already have. For example, let's look at this row, where we have a 33% chance of getting one that we don't already have. You can see that it says you need to draw three cards, on average, to get one of these cards that you don't already have. You could need to draw more, or you could need to draw less, but the average is that you're going to need to draw three cards in order to get one that you don't already have. Now, we're simply just going to sum up this column. What this is now telling us is that on average we'll need to draw this many cards in order to get them all. This simulation assumes that you only get one card per pack though, so to fix this, we're simply going to divide our total number of draws by the number of cards that you get per pack. So in our case, 3 cards per pack. You'll notice that this value of 45 is slightly higher than the 44 obtained through my MATLAB simulation. This is due to the fact that in my simplified Excel scenario, you can get duplicates in each pack. While there is a way to correct for this, it simply isn't worth it. It's a lot of work, and you can see anyways that both the simulation and the Excel simplification give fairly similar results. For this reason, I'm not going to include any additional modification to the sheet. In the description below, you'll find a link to the Excel sheet to use for these calculations, and you'll also see one on a Google Drive where you guys can edit it in real time on Google Drive. The sheet is protected though, so you can only change the cells that you're supposed to change. By allowing you guys to see these sheets and edit them for yourself, hopefully you'll get a better idea of how to modify it, get an idea of what goes into the math behind it. It's pretty simple, but figured letting you guys play around with it will be helpful. As I've been doing in the past, I'm going to continue running my coded simulations for any releases to give you guys the more accurate pack count, because as you guys can see, it gets slightly off when you don't account for the duplicates. There's two other things I wanted to note. First up is the duplicates in the Excel sheet. I want to let you know that the more cards that you have per pack, or the closer the number of cards per pack is to the total number of items available, 
the less accurate this method is going to be. For the most part, it's fairly accurate, and the results have come out pretty close to the MATLAB simulation, and have been pretty close to what people are actually getting online. So I feel pretty comfortable with it. The other thing I wanted to throw out there is that it doesn't account for the rarity of the cards. It assumes that there's equal probability of getting every card. We still don't have confirmation as to if rarity actually matters in these specialized packs, but it doesn't seem to make that much difference for the purposes of these simulations. One thing that you might notice is that the less total cards there are, so in our case 33, which is actually pretty high, the less the rarity of the cards matter in the simulation, and the closer it becomes to just an equal probability. In things like the 10 Years of Gears packs, where there were only like 12 items or something like that, it's such a low number that essentially it was equal probability for everything. I just want you guys to keep that in mind when you're running these simulations. These are by no means perfect, but they're pretty accurate, and they've given pretty good results compared to what people are getting in-game. So that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Chaps Math. If you have suggestions for future topics, be sure to let me know. As always, likes, comments, and follows are always appreciated. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.